Let's return to that uh, horrific uh, triple crossbow murder yesterday in a uh, house uh, in a, in a cul-de-sac in Quiet Bushy in Hertfordshire. Absolutely horrific murder of uh, two sisters and their mother. Uh, the mother, Carol Hunt, is the wife of BBC star John Hunt, is a well-known and much-loved racing commentator. Uh, two of their daughters, Louise, uh, 25, and Hannah, 28, also lost their lives uh, as they were attacked with a crossbow and knives in their own home. Uh, it's understood uh, that uh, the uh, the suspect, Carl Clifford, for whom there was a 20, pretty much 24-hour manhunt, uh, was found by police uh, after reportedly dropped, leaving his car was abandoned. Uh, he was found nearby hiding among headstones in a North London cemetery. Uh, but uh, he has uh, come to wounds himself or from a self it's believed to be self-inflicted crossbow wounds. Let's talk about this with Chris Phillips. He's a former Met Police Detective Chief Inspector. Uh, good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Julia. Um, absolutely horrific crime to find out about yesterday. And then we had the manhunter all day. Uh, this man, thankfully, found he is the suspect in a crime. Obviously, we need to be careful not to prejudice any potential future uh, um, uh, proceedings in court, but he's not been charged with anything. But it is understood that this man was known to one of the, the younger women who died, Louise, was her ex-boyfriend. They'd been together a year. That She'd broken up with him a week or two ago. He'd recently left the army. Um, uh, and uh, it comes from difficult circumstances uh, as well himself. Really, just a really concerning situation. But how common is a crime of this nature, Chris? Well, they happen uh, once in a while, don't they? And, uh, you know, effectively, it's a, a form of domestic incident, albeit, uh, you know, I, I think you could argue that case. But mm. but it was uh, a targeted attack on, on a on a on a girl and her family and that's uh, it's horrendous but you do get them from time to time mass murders usually crimes of passion as we we call it yeah it's a lot of the language around these crimes isn't it crimes of passion or domestic so it doesn't do them justice there's absolutely horrific scenes the police walked into extraordinarily it does appear uh, that uh, one of the three women i think the mother was able to they were able to untie themselves they'd been tied up with ligatures severely wounded by, by, by the crossbows and other knife attacks and had managed to uh, Dial 999 uh, um, and uh, and the paramedics there sadly unable to save all of their lives. Um, or any of their lives. I mean, just ho just horrific. I can't imagine what what uh, uh, the uh, John Hunt is is going through. And also, there is a third daughter as well. Thankfully, wasn't home and is still alive. Um, in terms of these circumstances, look, we, we, no charges, as I say, have been brought as yet. The, the, but the the, the the suspicion is that this is uh, of some kind of form of domestic. But we know that women, whether in you know long term marriages or in brief relationships, they can often be most at risk from a partner in the weeks following a breakup, can't they? Uh, even the women who have been in... We, we don't know the circumstances of this relationship, women, but women who have been in long-term domestically abusive relationships with perhaps the father of their children even, that actually at the point at which they leave is the point at which they are most in danger. Yeah, and I think that this has been shown throughout uh, throughout the years, actually, that, um, you know, people in long-term relationships or even short-term relationships, actually, uh, where a man has a tendency to violence uh, and, you know, whether he's been, um, you know, uh, let down or he feels as though he's been thrown out or whatever, that is the moment that uh, they seek revenge. And, and I think there's a lesson there for, for everyone, actually, that, uh, you know, you do need to be very careful about those people that you have relationships with. Yeah, I've, I've always thought, I've got, you know, got a 17-year-old daughter. I, I've interviewed so many women who've been in abusive uh, relationships, or the, or the, the parents who've lost children, who've been, daughters who've been killed in situations. And I've always just thought, do you know what, first sign of anything dodgy from any partner of my daughter I'm, I'm you know how much money do you want to leave how much money or I've got to be honest with you I worked in the East End I know people it's not that expensive I would always I will I will happily go to prison to protect my child's life I think most parents would feel that way but often people feel that they don't know they don't know who is going to be a risk do they let's also talk about the weapon reused uh, crossbow suspected crossbow attack we were hearing yesterday that has been confirmed that these were crossbow injuries that this man was uh, was later found with a crossbow injury it's believed to be self-inflicted and was spotted by a witness uh, with with uh, holding a crossbow it's an extraordinary weapon for anyone to be using at all unless you're i don't know hunting deer is that what they're useful but uh, as philip ingram was showing me a little bit earlier incredibly easy to get hold of you can get a cheap one you know 40 quid online you can get some super duper very high tech things you know three four hundred quid but what why on earth is such weaponry so easily available in this country well, it, I mean, you're right. There's no legislation to stop you owning a, a, a crossbow, and, and many people do, although they are very rare. Red, you know, 
in relation to other uh, forms of attack, you know, possibly four or five of these sort of incidents a year. Um, yes, they are easy to get to, but I would say to you that, that don't let's forget that there's a growth in the number of firearms, which are even more lethal yeah. um, uh, across the UK now with uh, imports across the channel. Uh, but also, of course, um, you know, and I think other weapons have been used in this incident. I think knives mm. are probably going to play a part in this. And of course, you know, you've got a knife in your kitchen drawer. So yeah. it's a very difficult thing to stop completely. Uh, yes, I think we, we should outlaw um, crossbows, but we should also do much more about stopping uh, guns in our society, yeah. which are a growing and, threat. And, and, and what, I mean, again, for so many years, we've all kind of patted ourselves on the back in this country about that we don't have this sort of rising gun crime anymore because we had the Dunblane massacre and like Australia when they had a massacre, you know, right, let's just cramp down on guns because the crucial thing about guns is you can kill a lot more people a lot more quickly from further away and, and, and then therefore much harder to stop. But, I mean, how are more guns getting into the country now? Why? What's changed? Well, we've got organised criminals now right across our, our country, right across Europe, right across the world, actually. Uh, and, of course, um, they are... We've seen the increase in gangland sort of things going on in our, in our city centres. Uh, and the weapons that they need to do their trade seem to be machetes and guns. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of those now, I think it's fairly easy in the UK... Um, uh, how, and, how long would it take you? I mean, I, I reckon with my contacts, I reckon I could probably get a hold of a gun if I really needed to. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I should never own a gun. I think we can all agree that. But, but, but if someone like you, if you were able to, if you, we set you on a course, right, go off and go off and get a gun, how long do you think it would take and how much would it cost you? Well, I, I think if you understand the underworld and, and, and people, you know, on the dark web, etc., I think you could get it very quickly indeed. And, what, within and hours, forget... days? Yeah, no, hours, I think. Hours. Um, particularly if you're, if you're mixing in the right circles with the right people, I think, you, you know, you can get one mm. delivered to your door um, very quickly. And this is a problem that we're, we're having to face much more. And, and we've seen attacks, whether it's terrorism, knives, guns across Europe. Uh, and that's going to be a growing issue yeah. over here as well, because the guns are just there in our society. Absolutely. Chris Phillips, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Former Met Police Detective Chief Inspector.